Anushka, how are you? I'm well, thank you, Chris. How are you? Oh, I'm absolutely um, over the moon that you've come on the show, um, especially at such short notice and without any fuss. Um, <laughs> that says a lot about how how well balanced you are, if you ask me, because oh, thank you. <laughs> I've noticed people who suffer trauma, it can become quite a big old thing to get them on the podcast. They might have the most wonderful story, um, but um, I'm learning, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm learning a lot about trauma as the podcast go on. Um, deal with a lot of military types, Anushka, who, who've, who've got the, I'm told not to call it PTSD because it's not a disorder, it's a natural occurrence in the, in, in the mind, I suppose. But one of the links that we've clearly made on this podcast many, many times is that a lot of us servicemen, we join up with trauma. You know, we, we've had um, childhood trauma, you could say. Uh, unresolved childhood trauma which then when you compound it with with some possibly unpleasant experiences in military uh, can then manifest as um, problem behavior later in in life can we say so friends at home massive welcome uh, Anushka and I um, hooked up over LinkedIn or that I'll make it sound like a dating platform <laughs> Um, but yes, Anushka, I was just taken by your profile, Rapid Transformational Therapy. I've heard a bit about this, but I can't wait for you to enlighten us. Spiritual Wellbeing Coach, which if you ask me, that's, that's where it is. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what we all need to get uh, better at. Unless, of course, you're, you're, you're already there. And um, your little bit of bio, guiding ambitious visionaries, entrepreneurs and leaders to dig deep, peel back the layers and discover the creativity, intelligence and excellence that is unleashed when we release the burdens of deep-seated fear and self-doubt. Oh, there goes my... I'm just going to get myself my picture back up, but do you want to explain how, how did we get to, to, to where we are? How did I get to where I am? Yes. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. So um, it's been a long time coming. So within the last 12 years, I've been um, working a spiritual program of recovery for my own traumas and um, things that have been going on, um, things that I had from my past. And from my past, I'll just give you a little bit of an, uh, um, an outline. I, I lost my dad when I was eight years old, and I never really thought of that as a trauma. But um, I, I realise now through the training that I've done and the work that I've done that um, sometimes um, traumas that are left untapped um, become bigger than you, you think they are. They're just kind of lying subconsciously in the background. So that really, I didn't feel as though that affected me being so young. I just kind of grew up knowing no different. Um, but later on, it manifested its way into my life through um, alcohol abuse and eating disorders. Um, and um, yeah, I, I kind of st it stunted my growth. I had lots of kind of creative talents, but riddled with so much fear, which was part of the trauma itself and self-doubt and feeling not good enough and all of those sorts of things. I stunted my creative growth and, and really stopped myself from being all that I could be. Um, I then got sober and started a spiritual program and started to relearn how to be me again. So it was a quite long, slow, steady journey. But um, as, as luck would have it, I lost my job last year. I say as luck would have it because actually I now see that it was the, um, the best thing that could happen to me. Um, it was a change of wind, um, a mutual kind of parting of ways. And this was a really good thing that happened because I, the job that I had really defined who I was, I thought because I got sober and I'd worked my way up the corporate ladder doing all these different things, um, but really hadn't worked out who I was yet. Um, so last year I had the opportunity to retrain and I think lots of, th lots of people did lots of things last year. I retrained and I dug deep. I really dug deeper into my spiritual program and realized that I have a real connection with people that have trauma. 
I have um, a gift that perhaps um, is untapped that I want to, I, there's an empathy, um, a skill, a, a, an empathic skill that I, I wanted to tap into um, that, uh, that I did over the last year. So I retrained to be a re rapid transformational therapist and also a spiritual coach and um, developed my spiritual toolkit, which I've been developing for 12 years. So it's like a combination and I wrote a book as well. So there was a couple of things that happened last year that were just really transformational for me. And it made me realize that um, maybe losing that job or deciding to move on from that was actually the best thing that could have happened for me because I could then really tap into, as I say, peel back the layers, uh, find out who I really am, find out what my purpose really is and be able to give back to humanity in something that really feels good. Yes, a couple of great areas you've covered there. The first I'd say, advise anybody, if, if you feel being in a job, it's, it's not right for you, it's holding you back, you're just doing it because for some reason you perceive you, you need the money, that's definitely time for a reassessment. Um, like yourself, the last job I had, fortunately it was several years ago, the most unhealthiest place to be mentally, I think, that you could possibly, possibly be. And the day that I said goodbye to that, what was quite a large salary, and I went back to my old self of living on £10,000 a year, which I've done quite happily most of my life, best day of my life, well... One of the best days, I felt such, such freedom and emancipation from, from pain. Pain, trauma, suffering, anxiety, um, all this kind of thing. The other is the alcohol. Um, as people who are familiar with my show know, I, I pretty much drank every day for 30 years and, and, and did loads of, well, <laughs> did my fair share of uh, other substances on top and should we just say Anushka should we just point out a few things that living that type of lifestyle when you realize that you're, you're living with addiction what the sort of signs of it are because mm -hmm. I think especially after what we've what we've come through Re re I refer to what's gone on recently. It, I think a lot of people haven't hidden the fact they've hit the bottle quite hard. Yeah. And yet they probably still are in denial of, of the damage that yeah. it can do, not just in terms of your health, but to your, to your relationships of those around you. And in, I'm thinking in particular children here and, and also your future prospects so should we chat about that a bit yeah i think um there's a very key point when it comes to any kind of addiction whether it be alcohol food gambling sex whatever it could be whatever what we're what we're essentially doing is trying to change the way we feel reaching out for some substance or something outside of ourselves to change the way we feel ultimately what that means is there's something inside that's not quite right that we're not living our true uh, to our true calling or to our to the we're not really allowing our true selves to come to the forefront for whatever reason and the reason I use the, the two most powerful limiting beliefs that I believe um, many of us suffer with fear and self-doubt fear is something that I thought I didn't have any of because I'm not afraid of heights or I'm not afraid of spiders fear is not about a fear or phobia fear is about uh, being uh, not being able to express our true selves because of fear of humiliation or fear of getting it wrong a telephobia fear of not being good enough fear of not having not being able to do it quite right or perfectly so this is why I really work I work with a lot of, of corporate clients as well that um, can be seen to be one person on the outside but actually on the inside, they haven't really shown their true selves because perhaps they're afraid of, you know, if you, you're not gonna like me if you see the real me. So there's a lot of that. And I think addiction comes from being in a place where you're not truly comfortable in your own skin. And for whatever reason it might be, it might stem back to trauma. It, we don't wanna say PTSD, 
Um, and I like the fact that you've said that because actually, you know, trauma comes in many shapes and forms and very obviously for someone that's worked in the military, um, very obviously for someone that has lost a parent um, or whatever it might be, but trauma comes in all shapes and sizes and we don't even know it exists. It could just be something that someone has said way back when we were six years old that has remained with us and, and traumatized our well-being or the way we feel about ourselves. Rapid transformational therapy taps into that root cause, whatever it might be, mm. sorry. No, I was just going to say, um, when I was a substance misuse specialist, which is a, a job I did for three years, um, a, a rough definition of addiction is when you follow a pattern of behaviour to the point where your regular systems in your life start to fall by the wayside that's just a friend because you, mm -hmm. i grew up with that old school kind of parenthood and and peer group that thought well as long as you're not drinking a bottle of whiskey before work you you can't possibly have a be a problematic drinker and yet what you realize when you when you research this subject and as you have to do if you're a specialist and and it's immediately obvious that that you understand this subject anushka is you realize no it's when you if you come home from work have a glass of wine and and that's just what what you do but then you crack on you get your house tidy you take the kids down the park or or wh whichever way around it, it should <laughs> it should go um yeah great absolutely fine it's the when you're saying Actually, kids, no, we're not going to the park tonight. Mummy or daddy's going to, you know, or, or and the reason is because you want to hit the bottle. Or your friend says, hey, Chris, pop round on your way back from work. You know, I haven't seen you. And you're like, oh, I've got, I've, I've got something. And it's like, it's not really true. It's that you want to get to the off license before it shuts. And, and this... Yeah, this kind of thing. The washing up isn't done immediately or the dishwasher isn't stacked. It's it's a day over. These are the the, the subtle signs, aren't they, Nushka, that that it, it's the spiral of addiction is setting in. I think it's even even simpler than that. I think, um, as I say, it's kind of if you're using a substance to change the way you feel because you're not comfortable with the way you feel. That's the first sign. But also, yeah, as you say, if it's getting in the way of the things that you normally do and you're making excuses for doing the things that you would normally love to do because the drink or substance is taking preference over other things that would cause you or would give you joy, then there's a problem. But I think the the, 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 the number one thing that I love, love to talk about, if you if you feel as though you have to control your drinking, it means that it's out of control to begin with. So if you feel as though, oh, I need to make sure I don't drink tonight, or I need to make sure I, I don't drink too much. If you're saying those sorts of things, it means that it's out of control to begin with. So I think that's a key sign. But yes, definitely when you start to, I mean, before you even start stopping going out with people because you'd rather drink um, or you'd rather do something you know to change the way you feel then um then that's an obvious sign but really anytime you feel as though you're controlling something it means that it's out of control to begin with and it doesn't mean that you need to be drinking a, a bottle of whiskey a, a day to, to be an alcoholic an alcoholic can be someone that you know has all the intentions of getting through a day um without the need for a substance but then somehow always just ends up picking up that drink because uh, I had a bad day or I had a good day or because it's sunny or because it's raining. And then the, the reasons become just, um, it, it just becomes a habit. And then a habit is, is you know, is the beginning of something that, because alcoholism and substance abuse is, is progressive, just as depression is progressive. The more depressed you are, the more depressed you get, you know, it's, it's a cycle and it's a progressive cycle and um, a downward one. Yes. And it's good to recognise these signs because the way change works is we can't change if we haven't admitted to ourselves that possibly we need to change. And you can't admit it to yourself if you don't understand. If you don't understand what's happening to you, or you won't, you sort of won't accept accept the facts. 
But the great news is once you decide, ah, yeah, I need to make changes. In my, you can't go back. It, it's it's a, it's like a one way. You might lapse and relapse, which is, I would say, part of the, the learning curve. But you can never go back to that stage where it's not a problem. <laughs> Mm. Am, I, am I making sense? It's, oh, it's... yeah, absolutely. I mean, I always say you can take the, the alcohol out of the fruitcake, but are you still left with the fruitcake? And that's me. That's my story mm. is that I'm still a fruitcake and I accept the fruitcake just as it is. I just um, don't put alcohol in it anymore. Um, and the thing is, it's accepting yourself warts and all. That is the most powerful thing that, you know, we have to look at the cause, the root, the reason for, for this in the first place. And it often comes from a place of not really loving yourself, of not really being comfortable in your own skin. And once we realize that we're left with this fruitcake, we have to try and understand it and, and accept it and fall in love with it again. And that's um, where spirituality comes in. So the reason I kind of combine the two modalities of RTT, rapid transformational therapy and spiritual um, modalities is because I think that they complement one another so beautifully. RTT is for finding the root cause you know, getting to the root of the, the trauma, as it were, and getting rid of that. But spiritual practices like meditation, like um, uh, visualization and affirmations to reinstate very positive beliefs about yourself. These are the sorts of things that maintain, and that's why it's spiritual well-being, maintain good health, maintain positive um, uh, um, self-talk, maintain a, just a positive um uh, I'd like to say feeling comfortable in your own skin. Actually, mm. it's it's about daily. Uh, it's like a daily reprieve from trauma. If yes. you have a trauma, it doesn't. It does just go away with the RTT. That's the whole process, and it's beautifully developed by a woman called Marissa Peer. And it is very very effective for getting rid of the root, the reason, and the cause. But life happens. And um, spiritual practices can reinforce and just allow you to live a more fulfilled life day by day and, and never kind of get too knocked around by the energies out there. We can start to feel, um, yeah, okay, so we got rid of the trauma, but how do we manage life on a daily basis? And that's where the spirituality comes in, allows you to really enjoy life rather mm. than just endure life. Can you get rid of the trauma, do you think, or do, do you just learn a strategy to to manage it so this is um where rct comes in and the the belief of this particular practice um as i say it's been really beautifully put together um uh, that the belief is that it is depleted deleted destroyed from your psyche that's the whole process and this is why it's so effective we go deep into your subconscious and we unpick the root of that trauma and once that's gone it's about reprogramming new positive beliefs in place. So could you give us an idea, Anushka, of how how does it how does it work? I'm trying to visualize. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll give you an example of a, an RTT session. Um, it's about an hour and a half to two hours long of a, a proper deep dive on one specific area. We do one thing at a time because it's most effective that way. I'd take you into a hypnagogic state which is a suggestible state. It's a deep level of relaxation. You're not completely out of control. You're in complete control. But you, I guide you into your subconscious mind so that you can um, find the root, the reason yourself. You can start to navigate areas of your mind that you didn't perhaps look at or you, we've, we've buried. And once all of these, um, once, once this comes to the surface and you're in that state, it's then very easy to suggest where we go from there. So we regress to certain points in the past. So we would figure out um, through the scenes that come up in that regression period, where were the, the linking scenes that created the belief that you were um, not smart enough or not clever enough or um, never going to be attractive enough or whatever it might be. We'll find the root and where that, where that belief came from. Then we, we do a, a very healing um, and releasing part of the session where you get rid of those old beliefs. And then we get to reframe those beliefs. So we get you to actually see how this happened in the first place. And that realization and that acceptance is so powerful 
right at that point. And that's the point at which we transform. And then there's a whole piece where we simply reprogram and transform your psyche. And then at the end of that, you get a recording, which you then get to play and reinforce that belief for 21 days after the session. Wow. It sounds like you've had some some successes. Yeah, amazing, really. It's just it, it is such a transformational um, program and hence the name of it, um, myself included. And when I did my training, I had obviously other students perform RTT on me and likewise. And some of the things that come up during that regression period, you just wouldn't believe. And I've had the same feedback from my clients. I just can't believe I remembered that. It's like, I didn't even think that that was still in my memory. It's just astonishing how we, we hold on to little things that have a huge impact on who we become. Because in our formative years, between the age of zero and, and eight, and that including being in the womb, we are picking up beliefs through what we hear, what we, what we feel. And, and those are the most defining moments of our lives. Yeah. So when we go through regression, we get to revisit all of that stuff. How does it work then? Um, I mean, somebody like myself, when I look back at my, my childhood, I, Anushka, I, I see it all for what it, is or was i mean there was a lot of unpleasant stuff but i understand why it happened i understand the pressures that were on the people that that were involved obviously forgiveness is an essential part of of being an enlightened indi individual uh, uh, but but it's not just that it's um well i mean well i mean it it, it is that but it's you you can't set yourself free if you bear any malice towards exactly. other, other individuals right and also you're deluded because this this is part of living in a left brain society you see so much people um indoctrinated into living in fear bitterness and hatred and this guy did that to me and he will get his and did and there's no understanding there's no empathy there's no like do you not want to know why that person behaved like that? Do, do you not care that maybe they their story is way, way, way worse than yours and it wasn't personal and it, you weren't victim, you know, victimised per se. This could have happened to any This kind of approach. And you, I think you can see from what I'm saying that I've obviously lived through this, thought it through and... and, and Absolutely, yeah. But You've got a most... very good point there about um, forgiveness. And this is the reason why I combine the two modalities. You've, you've hit the nail on the head. So you, RTT gets to work on you and your root cause. But how we live there on, on in is part of a spiritual, re requires a spiritual awakening in the way that you've just talked about. Looking at somebody else's part in, looking, look at your part in a situation from the different lens i.e. forgiveness, thinking about the other person, um, is just a more positive and more freeing way to live and more fulfilling because actually once you get rid of those negative energies of blame and of um, hatred and of resentment, you get to flow through life with much more ease and grace. And then you end up attracting more of that beautiful stuff towards you. So forgiveness is part of it. You said that you you kind of need to accept stuff as it is. You know, this is what happened. Yes, you're absolutely right. But once you've made that freedom, you've made that break from the past, you're then able to look at the world with different fresh eyes, knowing that, yeah, that happened to me. I've made peace with that bit. And I can make peace to my fellow neighbor because they don't know how that may have affected me. So, you know, when somebody points the finger, they've got three fingers pointing back at them. Often we're just mirrors of each other. Someone mm. may have said a bad word to you, but actually that they're just projecting their own insecurities on you. So when you get to look at the world through spiritual eyes, you get to just enjoy life more mm. and have be protected from those negative left brain energies, fear, self-doubt. We are absolutely surrounded by it. And this is why I say going back out into that world after you've been freed from your trauma isn't enough because you're still going to pick up all the energies of the, 
the left brain people out there that are going to um, tap into to your emotions and spiritual the spiritual way of life is kind of learning to protect yourself from right that. this is yes you've just nailed what i was getting at because as i say i consider myself enlightened i think i see the world all for what it is as much as we're we, we're going to them and i don't understand how this amazing universe works and I, I don't really care about that but what i will say is even as this uh, enlightened person when you pile the stress on me or when i perceive it's being piled on i recognize the signs of trauma that come out of me because i will snap at you i will literally say shut up leave me and it's not possibly good well it's not good behavior um i again i didn't realize a lot of this it's come through the podcast anushka you know mm -hmm. like i've had guests go no you listen and they don't mean it nastily and they've gone this is trauma talking and i'm like whoa and i never considered that i'd never considered that before and it's yeah i mean we're all like I, I don't like the word recovered because i just think of life as an experience but if we want to put it in that context we're all recovered individuals and yet what what's the next stage then for someone like myself how do i you know how, how do i step away say from the the pressure of work what and, and mm. this is what this is the stuff i love to talk about it's maintenance of your spiritual well-being which doesn't go away, you know, that that stuff is continuously, you can continuously improve, as you said, unless you're the Dalai Lama. In fact, the Dalai Lama is probably continuously improving his spiritual well-being as well, because we need to, because we are affected by the energies in and around us all day, every day, and the rest of the world are not completely healed. So therefore, we need to work on this daily. So how do we pick up those kind of spiritual tools? I believe it comes from daily discipline. I think that is the number one above all else. And this is why I run an eight week program. And I also run a tribe for anyone that just wants to do some weekly maintenance. And, and that's a really kind of good way just to keep the discipline going. That's the whole point is maintaining your spiritual discipline. If that means getting up every morning and praying, then fine. If it means getting up every morning and meditating, then fine. If it means getting up and doing a gratitude list, aligning yourself with aligning your chakras with um, what it is you want to give to the world today then brilliant you've got so much you can do with your spirituality but start small and keep doing it it's the discipline of doing it day in day out that creates such big changes in your life yes it's why we talk about things like morning routines isn't it that exactly that, that get us to start seeing mornings as your time rather than the punishment time before you have to go to the job. Mm -hmm, um, exactly. And it gets you in such such a much more positive frame of mind, doesn't it? If you've, if you've already got up before everyone else, you've done your exercise or you've read a book, whatever your thing is, then you have a healthy breakfast if you do eat breakfast. I have my green smoothie around about lunchtime and just sees you right doesn't it absolutely and your morning routine can i mean it's different from one person to the next but what i'm finding and this is why i developed the vip tribe is that my morning routine is changing as i'm growing i'm changing and different things work for me more quickly now than they used to um, and it is i mean it is about daily discipline so keep doing it and you will see results but there are the more you practice the more you get to find loopholes that work for you things that work work quicker i know for example when i write down three aligned actions for the day and i nail those three actions for the day i go to bed with a feeling that i wanted to achieve by the end of the day well, and it's, it's about knowing what to put on that list. Are they tasks? No, they're not tasks. They are things, they are contributions, mm -hmm. and, and intentions and contributions. So how do I want to contribute to the world today? How do, what are my intentions for the energy I want to, to put out there? It's those sorts of things, and those are what make me put my head on the pillow at the end of the night saying, I did a good job today. 
And I need that because that's my daily affirmation of I got through this day and I did the best I could. And that's a far cry from where I was when I didn't want to wake up in the morning. Anushka, let's leave it there because I think we don't want to sort of overload people, but I think we've <laughs> certainly said enough to to ring some bells and, and you know, get get people's thinking in in alignment with what we're trying to say. Where, where can people well I mean I'm gonna put your your contact details underneath our YouTube video. Do you just wanna give your book a mention? I saw the word author in your um, Yeah, I have it to hand. Um the book's called Twelve Butterflies. I wrote this um at the beginning of this kind of rapid journey of transformation before I even did the RCT training. It was really for therapeutic purposes only for myself. And then after writing it, I realized that it might help one other person that's perhaps struggling with needing direction in life, wanting to change their life or wanting to up level in some area. The reason it's called 12 Butterflies is because I hit 12 years sober last year. And also because I kept seeing butterflies everywhere I went. And I believe they are angel signs that you're on path. And they started to become a really powerful symbol of transformation for me. Um, and that's the reason for the name of the book. You've only got to look at a butterfly and just realise how amazing this life is, isn't it? <laughs> and yet we, 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 we get so distracted by the left brain controllers that just don't want us to be happy that we, 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 we miss these simple things that once you understand that simplicity, then I think that's the key to, to, to un, unlocking your potential and your, and, and your well-being. Most definitely. Anushka, massive thank you. Stay on the line. I'm just going to play my outro stuff and then I'll, then I'll thank, thank you properly. To everybody at home, uh, massive love to you all. Uh, we're going to do a live session now, so please make sure you've joined the Patreon at the Warrior level. It's $9.99 a month for, for life coaching every month. That's a bargain, believe me. And uh, we'll see you next time. Hello, friend. I hope this finds you well. My name's Chris Thrall. I'm a former Royal Marines commando, and I fought my way back from chronic trauma and addiction to live, work, and travel in 80 countries across all seven continents, achieving all of my dreams and goals along the way. Now I pass my simple system on to other people, but I can only help you if you like and subscribe. So please do so because you get one life and if you live it right, one is enough.